It's Blockbusters with your host, Michael Aspel. Thank you. Well, you're, you're very kind. Uh, welcome to Blockbusters, a, a, a brand new edition, a brand new look and a brand new host. Well, not so much brand new as different. Uh, but the most important thing is we have a brand new set of untried contestants. And they are all, as it happens, students. Students of what we'll find out a bit later. Let's just meet them. We have Chris and Belinda and Pat. It's Chris Cherry and uh, Belinda Cherry, so there is a relationship, I gather. That's right. Um, what is it? Uh, I'm Dad, and Belinda's my daughter. That's a relief. Right, <laughs> Belinda, where are you from? You're both from the same place. Well, we, the family home is in Sutton Coldfield. But I'm currently studying and working in Manchester. Oh, so you haven't had far to come? No. Pat, Pat Garrett. Yes. Didn't you kill Billy the Kid? That's right. <laughs> yes, you've heard that one before. I have, many times. Right, sorry about that. First time for me, anyway. Yes. And where are you from? I'm from Haswell on the Wirral. That sounds very nice, mm -hmm. Cheshire. Yes. OK. Am I right? Merseyside. Merseyside. Well, I'll forget that one. That's the wrong <laughs> one for me for a start. But you know the game. Well, obviously, you wouldn't be here. But to remind those who love it so much, we have, as usual, these 20 hexels here, each of which have uh, an initial on them, the first letter of a word. And whoever gets the uh, correct answer will claim that hexel, and it will change to their colour. For purple, for the pair, and white for the single player. The purple have to go across the board, and the white player has to go from top to bottom. That's it, basically. So what do you think? Shall we have a go? Yes. All right, then, there's a letter flashing. The letter is W. Let's play Blockbusters. <laughs> what W is an extremely tight corset of bone and elastic... Oh, that's Chris. Whalebone. I beg your pardon? Whalebone. Not whalebone, you anticipated, but it's a nice word, but not the one we're looking for. So, Pat, here we go. Uh, what W is an extremely tight corset of bone and elastic, sounding like a little stinging insect? Waspy. How would you know that? It's absolutely right, <laughs> waspy. <laughs> There's a white one on the board, and it's your turn to choose a letter. Um, L, please. L. What L is the quality that might be called ergophobia or indolence or when one of the seven deadly sins, Chris? Laziness. Is laziness, correct. <laughs> None of us can be accused of that yet anyway. One colour each on the board and which letter will it be? H, you can please. confer on this. Sorry, H please, Michael. H it is. Uh, what H can be a blow, slang for a murder or a successful record release? Chris? Hit. Hit is right. <laughs> and you have a choice of letter. M. Okay. M, Michael. Thinking please. of tactics, an M. What M is the American term for the silencer of a car, though in Britain it means a warm scarf, and that is Pat. Muffler. Muffler is right. <laughs> yeah. To all, your choice of letter. G, please. G. What G, from the Latin meaning to swallow, is one of the seven deadly sins? <laughs> Belinda. Greed? Not greed. So, I can uh, offer it to you, Pat, to swallow one of the seven deadly sins. That nasty noise. The word is gluttony, oh, yes. and that's the noise that often follows, gluttony. But there we are, that's from the Latin <laughs> gluteri, to swallow, as most of us knew. Uh, so, another G. What G, the German for bell and... Uh, don't go, Pat. Glockenspiel. Glockenspiel is right, quick as a... <laughs> yes, an instrument of metal plates played with two small hammers, like having a headache most of the time. You're doing very well there, and you have the choice of letter. A, please. A. What A is the astronomical sign for people born between the 21st of... Pat. Aries. No. Anticipated, but now I can offer it. So no conferring, otherwise I have to smack the backs of your knees. So, uh, the astronomical sign for people born between the 21st of January and the 19th of February. Chris? Aquarius. Aquarius it is. <laughs> what, what star sign are you, incidentally? 
Leo, Michael. Very nice people. Right. <laughs> Your choice of letter. Oh, well, that's two of you. Next letter, then. Um, You're really pl taking this game seriously. That's what I like to N, see. N, please, Michael. N. N. What N is produced by members of a chapel and maybe daily or weekly broadsheet or tabloid? Chris? Newspaper. Newspaper. Yes. <laughs> Interesting spread of colours across the board. We're not near blockbusters yet, but you have the next choice of letter. F, please. F. What F is a soft membrane-covered area between the immature skull bones of young children or animals? <laughs> Pat. Frontel. Uh, front. Frontel. No, no, I can't accept that. Sorry. I can offer it to you others. It's a soft membrane covered area between the immature skull bones of young children or animals. F. It's the thing you're always afraid of putting your fingers through when they're babies. The fontanelle. Oh, the yes. fontanelle. What F is an escape, a set of steps, and the fins on a dart, Chris? Flight. Flight. That's it. <laughs> so, you're working your way towards... Well, you're all working your way towards the blockbusters. That's the point of the game. So, your choice of letter. R, please, Michael. R. What R? The artist who painted the Sistine Madonna altarpiece is also a teenage mutant ninja turtle. Oh. Even I don't know that one. It was Raphael. Yes, that's right. <laughs> What R is a 1997 film starring Mel Gibson about a businessman whose son, Belinda... Ransom. Was it because it was that particular actor? Ransom is right. <laughs> and now we have a situation where this first game might go to you if you get to the next one because we have a flashing light on the purple. Pat, it's up to you to, to block that as best you can. Uh, what letter will it be, then? E, please, Michael. E, Belinda. What E is another name for Cupid, the god of love in Greek. Pat. Eros. Eros is right. Well blocked. <laughs> Choice of letter to you. Um, where am I? D, D. B, uh, D, please. A D. OK. What D is the name given to the concept developed by a British naturalist that living things evolve, Pat? Darwinism. Darwinism. Excellent. <laughs> J, please. A, a J, right. What J is the name of Ahab's wife in the Old Testament used in a derogatory way, Pat? Jezebel. Jezebel, correct, and that is Blockbusters. <laughs> You've crept up on me there, it took me quite by surprise, but well <laughs> done. That first game goes to you, and of course what happens is uh, the next game is particularly important because, um, you know, it's the best of three. Now, uh, Chris, let me come to you. Um, you're from Sutton Coldfield. You're, you're studying, aren't you? What are you studying? Um, French A-level, Michael. Right, and you've got a, a variety of interests because you're, you're also a wine fanatic. What, what do you do with the wine? Um, well, I, I lecture at night school for, um, on wine to adults. All People kinds of wine, all, the whole? All kinds of wine, yeah. Not French, particularly. Not particularly, no. And you sing in a barbershop chorus. That's right. Yeah. Is this after the wine or before? Uh, a bit of both. <laughs> <laughs> right, and Belinda, uh, you're at university. What are you yes. doing? I'm studying clothing engineering and management at UMIST. In clothing London. engineering or is it those two separate subjects? No, all together. It's, it's to do with um, fabric and garment technology, but also the technology, the machinery behind it, and also computing. It so it, like it, it sort of covers a wide range. 19th band century thing. English for a moment, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and who do you admire apart from the actor we mentioned earlier? Oh, um, Jean Paul Gaultier. He's mad, isn't he? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, Adds to the attraction. Good reason. I mean, you also collect hat pins, I'm told. Yes, I do. Well, for what purpose? I just think they're very nice. Oh. It's very odd. But, um, yes, I, I just think they're very pretty. You don't go to wrestling matches and use them to... No. <laughs> the, uh, some people do. Pat, now, you've taught for quite a while, haven't yes. you? Yes. Where did you teach? Uh, mostly in Birkenhead. Yeah. And what sort of level? Um, I finished up with six-year-olds, sort of six to elevens. And you did, th did that for a while? 32 years. Wow. Do you ever <laughs> see your old pupils? Yes. Yeah? Keep yes. in touch? Yes. And what course are you doing? Well, I'm hoping to do a course in photography. Just purely for recreational purposes. Not for a new career? No. <laughs> right. And you're also a sportswoman? 
Well, armchair sports one. <laughs> Who do you support? Liverpool. Is that good? Of course. <laughs> silly question, but I've got more silly questions like that to come. And as I say, this is the, uh, the one that, uh, that uh, is quite important for you because, um, you know, if you lose the next one, whoever is behind, that means Chris and Belinda, then uh, it's the end for you. But we have a tea flashing into the next round. What tea is the trade after which the sartorius muscle in the human leg is named because the worker sat cross-legged on the floor? Pat. Tailoring. Tailoring is right. <laughs> so anything to do with clothes is sartorial, as Belinda might well have, uh, have known. What, uh, what letter will you have? Um, B, please. A B. What B is a type of unaccompanied close harmony singing which originated, Pat? Barbershop. Oh, dear. <laughs> Correct, of course, Chris. <laughs> <laughs> that was a cruel one, but you're going extremely well here. Another letter, please. C, please. C. What C can mean a device for holding things together to cut hair or fur and an excerpt from a film, Belinda? Comb? Not a comb. I will repeat this for you, Pat, and uh, things are going well for you, see if you get this. What C can mean a device for holding things together to cut hair or fur and an excerpt from a film? Clip. Clip is right. <laughs> and we come to a very important moment here, as you acknowledge I can see that, uh, Chris and Belinda, because uh, Pat is poised for blockbusters and you have to try and block her as you have done once before. Let's see if you can do it again. Keep the game going. Uh, a letter, please, then, Pat. K, please. K, of course. What K derived from an Asian ceremonial custom describes submission to another person? <laughs> Pat. Kowtow. Kowtow, and that's blockbusting. <laughs> well, nice work. That's two games out of three, which means, of course, that you now have to prepare yourself to go on our hot spot yes. and take the golden <laughs> run. Uh, sadly, it means that uh, Chris and Belinda, you've, you've had your go and, and, and that's that. But nobody goes empty-handed from this, of course. You go home with £30 each, of course. And the thing that perhaps is most valuable of all is a very elegant fountain pen, which is inscribed with the logo of this noble programme, which you can use to sign all the autographs you'll be asked for for appearing on it. <laughs> so thank you very much, Chris and Belinda. Pat, now is the time I invite you to take your place on the hot spot. <laughs> well, it's slightly different here, because what you are faced by is a board which has the same number of hexels, but the letters are rather more complicated, and you have to go from goal to goal. That is, from left to right, you will have 60 seconds in which to do that, but I'm not going to ask you to start until you have decided which set of letters you wish to start with on the left-hand side. What'll it be? SS, please. SS. <clears throat> Smiles, nose pegs and swimming routines to music. A synchronised swimming. Yes. Choice. RF. A helpful hand in poker. Royal Flush. That's right. BE. Comedian and author of Popcorn. No idea. Uh, MT. Famous figures in wax. Madame Tussaud. DM. Butler's Wharf site for viewing mass-produced objects. WSC. Financial disaster in 1929. Wall Street crash. CAV. Chicken in wine, French style. Coco Van. Coco Van is right. Blockbuster. <laughs> Well, you've done your golden run, and this is what you've won. This is an extraordinary camera. You just drop in the film, and it will automatically wind and focus for you, know when to flash, and even choose the best framing. So, for you, it has to be absolutely the last word in point-and-shoot photography. You just point and shoot. That's your prize. Congratulations. And while you take your seat, I'll uh, introduce you in a moment to your next competitors. And I must say, that was the perfect prize for Pat, because photography is her interest. That was just coincidental. Uh, she passed, of course, on a couple of questions, and I can tell you that B.E., the comedian and author of Popcorn, 
was Ben Elton. And the other one, which was DM, Butler's Wharf site for viewing mass-produced objects. The answer to that was Design Museum. Well, so far so good. One golden run under the belt and time for you to meet your contestants who are Margot and Adrian. Hello. That's Margot Stewart, of course. Margot, where are you from? From Pinner in Middlesex. Right, and what, what are you uh, doing for a living? For a living, I run an au pair agency from right. my home. And what are your other interests? Um, I'm interested in sport. I like watching my uh, children play a lot of sport, and I'm very interested in watching them. I love the theatre and cinema. Playing bridge. I have a note here about a Disney shop. Are you involved in Oh, yes, in I have Disney? a part-time part job in the Disney store in London. Do you have to dress up for this? No, I don't have to wear the ears, except on Mickey's birthday. <laughs> when everybody has to wear the yes. ears. You get sprinkled with magic dust. <laughs> How lovely. And Adrian, uh, Adrian Davis, you, you and your partner are simply friends in this. Yes, okay. yeah, just good friends. Right, oh, I accept that. Right, what, you're a salesman, what do you sell? Uh, computer equipment and uh, other office technology. Right, and uh, your background is quite interesting, I believe. You were in the forces. Yeah, I was in the RAF for uh, about 17 or 18 years, and uh, I was a musician, oh. travelling around the world playing music usually killing people with it. Oh, that's one yes. way of doing it. Yes, were you in a dance band or military? Military band. Uh, but, of course, it, it sort of splits down into all different types of, um, type of, types of music. And where do you, your travels take you? All over the world. Japan, Hong Kong, America, Canada. I won't go on. Oh, <laughs> all right, well, but I will. And you've met Pat, of course, and yes. you know how the game works. So if you're poised and ready, let's play Blockbusters. <laughs> The letter that is flashing is a W, and here comes the first question. What W is the leisure centre administered by Chris Barry in the role of Gordon Brittus in television's The British Empire? Ah, no, you came in at the very end, Margot, and the time was up anyway, so I'll tell you, it's the kind of detail you don't remember from these things, obviously. Uh, and I Tobermory, Margot. The Wombles. The lovely Wombles, correct. Right. <laughs> we have a purple on the board, so you're started, you're off and running, and you have the choice of letter. T, please. A T. What T was the Percy who hosted guard... Margot. Percy Thrower. Percy Thrower. That was quick as a flash. Absolutely right. He looked after the Blue Peter Gardner in 1988, and that's where you remember him from, I'm sure. And your choice of letter? Uh, you. You. You, yes. Uh, what U, by implication between 12 and 20, is a large but unspecified number? Pat? Umpteen. Umpteen. The teacher speaks. <laughs> and there's a white to answer the two purples. And, Pat, what's the letter going to be? K, please. A K. What K is a woven rug without any... Margot. A kelim. That's extraordinary. I've never heard of such a thing. You're absolutely right, a kelim. <laughs> it's traditionally made in the Middle East, and, uh, and Adrian probably tripped over a few in his time. Right, you have the choice of letter. C, please. What C can be to blacken by burning? A name for a cleaner, Pat? Char. Char. Right, three purple and two white on the board at the moment. Nicely balanced. And the letter, please? G, please. A G. What G are the long, thin, crunchy breadsticks served as appetizers, Margot? Grissini. Grissini in Italian restaurants? Correct. <laughs> I suppose you don't want Grissini, you just want one of them. What do you ask for, then? It's a Grissino, oddly mm. enough. <laughs> Glad I told you that, aren't you? Yeah. Uh, would you choose the letter, please? R, please. R. What R is the family of birds that includes coot, corncrake, a bar to hang things on, or part... <laughs> uh, Pat. Rail. Rail is right. <laughs> I think we're all learning here, certainly speaking for myself. Uh, wh what letter now? S, please. S. OK. There's your S. What S is the surname of Patsy, Joanna Lumley's character in Margot? Oh, uh, Patsy Stubbs. 
That's not correct. So, Pat, I'll put the whole question to you while you think about it. What S is the surname of Patsy, Joanna Lumley's character, and absolutely fabulous, of Oliver, also who directed JFK? There's an extra clue in that. The Oliver, and the character from the other thing was Stone. Oh. Right. What S is an edible seed used on rolls? A magic password, Margot? Sesame. Sesame, sesame. <laughs> right, a liberal sprinkling in both colours on the board there. Let's see where this is going to lead us with your next choice of letter. B. B. What B is a member of an ethnic group centred on the Western Pyrenees or a tight-fitting <laughs> bodice for women, Adrian? Basque. Basque is correct. Was it the tight-fitting bodies for women bit that told you? It's Absolutely. You, the early, of course. OK, what will it be then? What letter will you choose? Uh, o, please. The O. What O are the conically roofed buildings seen, especially in Kent? Pat got there first. Oast houses. Oast houses, yes. <laughs> A letter, please. L. Please. What L... Does the L stand for, in the initials of the charity, R-N-L-I? Adrian. Lifeboat. Lifeboat. <laughs> little extra information. Founded in 1824, the Royal National Lifeboat Institution rescues three people a day on average. They must be exhausted. They're wonderful people. Uh, a letter, please. M, please. N. M. 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 M for me. What M... Does an aerolite become when it falls to Earth, Margot? Meteorite. Meteorite is correct. <laughs> if you said meteor, I couldn't have accepted that because that doesn't reach Earth. And now we have a possible blockbusters coming up. So, Pat, you're going to stay in the game here. Let's see what happens now. The choice goes to you, of course, Margot. E, please. E, yes, it would be, perhaps. Let's see if you've made the right choice. What E was the novelist who wrote The Horse Whisperer, a bestseller, Margot? Nicholas Evans. Correct. Nicholas Evans is at Max Blockbuster. <laughs> right, you've started extremely well. That is uh, one game to love to you. And, uh, Pat, you, uh, you've got, you had your first gold run. You've got to work hard to get another one because it's the best of three. And so you've got to play well to stay in it. So... Is the letter flashing for the next one? Yes, it is. And the letter is B. And here's the question. What B is a round, flat hat with a pom-pom worn by certain Scottish regiments? <coughs> That's Adrian. Berry. No, not Berry. Nicely anticipated, but in fact, not nicely enough. So I give the question to you then, uh, Pat. What B is a round, flat hat with a pom-pom worn by certain Scottish regiments and a royal residence in Scotland on the River D? Balmoral. Balmoral is right. <laughs> so we have one white on the board, and that is where he's going to stay until the next time we play Blockbusters. Goodbye for now.